Welcome back to another video. Today we're back in Fusion 360 and I'm going to continue with the design series. The idea behind these videos is for me to just create some designs and for you to follow along. You know, you might already know a lot of this stuff, but generally when you see someone else's workflow, there are things you can pick up or even just for the fun of it. Also, I'm always looking to learn. So if you think I can improve anything in my workflow, let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. So today we're going to design a simple comb that you can 3D print if you want to. As I kind of said, what we design here isn't important. It's kind of what you learn in the process. And over time, I'm gradually going to increase the difficulty of these designs. If you have anything you want to suggest for me to design in this series, leave a comment down below. So let's jump into it and try and design this comb. So you probably already know by now, but the first thing we do in a new project, right click, new component every single time. And we're going to call this comb. This design will include parametric modeling. As you guys know, I'm a big advocate of it. I thoroughly suggest you implement it into your designs. If you want to learn about parametric modeling in depth for Fusion 360, there's a course over on my website for website members, or alternatively, you can go and watch my free CAD parametric modeling video, which covers the same concepts, but obviously for free CAD. I leave links to both in the description below. So for me personally, whenever I start a new design, I like to get as many of these parameters down as I possibly can before I actually start. So so I'm going to go up to modify, change parameters, and I'm going to add a bunch of them in. I'll show you the first one. So to add a parameter, we click this little plus. Uh, I'm going to create a parameter called comb width, and I'm going to make this 140 millimeters. And you can see here the unit is set to millimeters. I'm hit OK. So now I'll add the rest of them and I'll skip ahead the video so you can copy them down. Okay, so here are all the parameters. You can copy these down if you're following along. The only thing I'd like to highlight is for the last one here, num teeth, there's no unit. And that's because we're gonna be setting a quantity and that doesn't require a unit. To do that, when you add a parameter, go to unit and just select no unit. And that should help us a bit later on. All right, so let's hit okay and get started. So first thing we're gonna do is create a new sketch. And uh, we're going to go and sketch on this front plane. And we're going to get a rough shape of this comb. So we can go up to create a rectangle, center rectangle. And I'm going to use the center point as a reference, as always. Drag outwards. And you can see we've got these boxes now where we can enter in our parameters. The first one is going to be width. So we can just start typing comb width. And if we hit tab, that will jump to our second parameter, which we can set as comb height, hit enter, and there we go. Just like that, we've got a nice constrained rectangle ready to go. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add a bit of an arc here to the top of the comb, just to make it look a little bit better. So we're gonna go up again, create, arc, three point arc. Now for this tool, you'll have to select two points first of all, those being the start of the arc and the end of the arc. So we wanna start this in this corner here, which will make that coincident. And we'll come over to the other corner in the far right, click again. And finally, if we move this up and down, you can see now it's kind of asking us to set the height of that arc. So kind of drag it to where you think it's right and click again. And now notice this turned blue. That means we're not fully constrained and it doesn't know about dimension because if we click and drag, you can see we can still adjust this. Let's hit D on the keyboard. We'll click on our arc and you can see now we've got a radius value here. Click, and I'm just going to set this to be a nice round number. I'm going to make it 200 millimeters. Hit enter. Our sketch is now fully constrained. So let's just hit finish for a second, kind of see what we've got. And this is basically going to be the shape of the comb. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back into our sketch, and we can do that over on the component tree. We're going to drop down into comb here, drop down into our sketches. And I tell you what, we'll actually rename this because it's good practice. We'll call it comb hit enter. Now to get back in there, we just double click. We're straight back in the sketch. Uh, we're gonna grab this two point rectangle tool and we're gonna use this to create the teeth of the comb. Now what we'll do is we'll just create one of them and then we'll use something called a rectangular pattern tool to make our lives so much easier and get this done really quickly. So we've got to place our first point. You know, you don't want to place this floating around. You want to make reference to anything you can. And we know the teeth are going to start from the bottom of the comb. So we can place our first point on the bottom line here. And that'll at least make that bottom part coincident. So remember we have parameters for this again. So let's hit D on the keyboard. Let's grab our two vertical lines, enter in our parameter, and we've got 
tooth width. And there we go. And let's do height as well. Select our top and bottom lines. We also have a parameter called, oh, we, we don't actually, we forgot that one. So let's go back to our parameters, modify, change parameters, add a new one. So let's click this and we'll do tooth height. And let's make this 25. We'll probably change this later on. So now we have that parameter. Let's go back and edit this dimension by double clicking on it. And now let's enter that value. Tooth height, there we go. So we have our tooth all constrained, but of course we can still move it along this bottom line, which we don't want. So to fix that, luckily we created an offset. So we're gonna click our dimension tool again by hitting D on the keyboard. We can select our edge line. And we're gonna enter that parameter that we created called tooth offset. And now notice all those lines turn black once again. And it's pretty much happy, right? It's not complaining. Everything seems good. So let's hit finish. And now we're ready to extrude. So let's go up here and grab the extrude tool. So let's go ahead and select everything other than the tooth. So we'll click on this one and this one. And now it's gonna ask us for a depth value. We created a parameter for that. So we can just enter cone depth which was five millimeters. Make sure your operations new body and hit OK. You can see what that's done for us is it's just extrude that whole thing and leave the tooth. Next up, we're gonna create all those extra teeth across the comb. But before we do that, one tip I would give you is to add any fillers that you wanna add now before we create the rest of them. This will save you a bunch of time later on and you won't have to click through all these fillets. So let's go grab the fillet tool up here and we're gonna zoom in and select the edges where the teeth will be. So it's gonna be these two, and also these two up in the top. We could just kind of drag this and set it by eye, but of course we have parameters, and we're gonna to do tooth width divided by two. And that'll give us this nice round fillet, and it just looks perfect. So let's hit okay, and there we go. You can see we've now got those nice rounded edges. So now let's do the really fun part where we create this pattern. So let's go up to create pattern, rectangular pattern. Uh, we're gonna go and select our faces that we want to duplicate. And make sure your type over here is set to faces and click select objects. And then when we zoom in, we need to select everything we wanna duplicate along this cone. So we want this, both these fillets, the inside flat faces, and then up the top, that single fillet, and that should be everything. The next box underneath here is this direction. Click on that. Now we want obviously to duplicate this across the comb, which in this case is along the X axis or this little red axis here. So click on the red axis and that's our direction set. And the next thing we need to do now is specify a distance. Kind of like I showed you in the last video, we can click and drag and kind of do this manually, we know better than that. So let's go ahead and create this distance. Now for this, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of math, but luckily we have parameters which makes that easy. Whenever we create a pattern, typically what we do is we duplicate whatever we've selected a set quantity of times along a set distance. And you can see that here, right? If we increase quantity to five, our distance of that pattern is the same. There's just more of them inside that distance. So we need to set the limits for this pattern, and we can do that pretty easily by doing a little equation. So let's go ahead, create a set of brackets. And in here, we, we know the, the width of the comb, right? So we can enter straight away comb width. We also know that we want one of these offsets either side. So that gives us two offsets. So straight away, we can subtract that away. So let's go ahead and subtract tooth offset times two. And remember, we need to put a minus at the very start so that we're going in the right direction. So you can see now we've got the comb width minus the tooth offset times two. But notice that hasn't quite made it the right distance, right? You can see just by eye, the offset on this side is more than the offset on this side. And the reason for that is simply because when we create a pattern, we start from the pattern itself, which in this case is a whole tooth width. So all we need to do here to account for that is just 
add a tooth width, right? So we're just gonna add that in, tooth width. And you'll see that'll update now. And uh, basically that just accounts for the difference in them tooth widths. And just to kind of make that a little clearer, so if we zoom in here on the original tooth, when we start this pattern, we're starting from this face. So we've, we're trying to determine that distance between them. We know that the offset is gonna be there, but also the tooth width as well. So we're gonna account for that on this side, which should give us our correct distance. So let's hit okay. And you can see that's worked for us. And we've got the correct offset on either side with five teeth in between. Now five teeth isn't gonna be much use for a comb. So let's go back into our pattern by clicking the pattern icon down here on the timeline. Now uh, we can change how many teeth there are by changing this quantity value. And remember we created a parameter for this as well called num teeth. And it's important that this parameter doesn't have units, as I mentioned before. This is something that's actually a little frustrating about Fusion 360. It would be pretty cool here if we could determine how many teeth we needed based on the width of the comb. Unfortunately, you can't do that. For quantities, you can only set a non-unit value. If anyone actually knows how to fix this or how to get around it, let me know, because that would be something I'd love to know. So once we've set our number of teeth, let's hit OK. And there we go, it's starting to look pretty good. And uh, that's 30 teeth in between. And you can see what I mean now about how we saved a bunch of time by filleting first. So if we hadn't have done that, we'd have to go through each of these and click them all. And that's a really pro tip whenever you're modeling is whenever you're using patterns or duplicating something, make all the necessary changes first and then do your duplication. So technically now we could go and just 3D print this as is but we're going to make it look a lot better and a lot more polished. Typically, whenever you see a comb, they tend to come down to a point at the end of the tooth, right? So we're going to do that in our model. So let's rotate around. Now, we're going to create a new sketch. We're going to grab that tool, sketch on the side here of the comb, and we're going to make use of the arc tool once again. So let's go up to create arc, three-point arc, and our first point is actually going to be down here at the midpoint. And this is one of the things I love about Fusion 360 as well, is it's kind of suggesting to you what you might want. In this case, I really want a point here in the middle. It, it already knows that distance. So we're gonna grab that arc tool, select our center point here, and you, you'll know it's the midpoint constraint because you'll see that little triangle. And that's the same thing that you see up here, midpoint. Let's grab our first point, we're gonna place it there. And then the second point is gonna be up here at this corner. And you'll see we can now move this around to adjust our arc. Now we want it so that it's not going outside of our boundary here. We just want it to stay within our lines. And that'll do. And you can see that's already constrained. And now all we need to do is mirror this to the other side. So let's go up to create, mirror. We're gonna click on our first line. Oh, and of course we need a mirror line first. So let's cancel that. This is a great example. So we're gonna grab the line tool Whenever we want to mirror a sketch, you have to be mirroring on a line or a plane. So in this case, we're gonna select our point in the middle again, always at the midpoint. And let's go up to the other midpoint and we're gonna make this a construction line. So let's click on the line, hit X on the keyboard and you'll see that line will become a dashed line. And that represents a construction line in Fusion 360. These lines, are just there for a guide, essentially. So now let's try and mirror again. So let's go up to create, mirror. We're gonna select our first sketch object. We're gonna grab our mirror line selection tool. Now we'll select that construction line and hit okay. And there we go. We've now got these two lines. They're fully constrained and we're good to go. So let's hit finish. Now let's grab our extrude tool once again. We're gonna select the outer parts of this shape because we're gonna cut. Now let's change our operation to cut, rotate around, and we're gonna cut to object, which is the other side. So on the menu here, we're gonna do extent type to object, select that very edge face, and you'll see what it'll do for us is create this cut. Now let's hit okay, and there we go. If we rotate around, you can see our comb now comes to a fine point at the end of these teeth. So let's grab the fillet tool, we're gonna grab these edges here. And we can kind of eyeball this one since it's basically a user preference, right? It depends what you want. I'm gonna go for 12 mil, hit okay. 
and we're also going to fill up these edges as well so let's drag this in see what we can get away with usually it'll get to a point where it just breaks you want to come back a bit I'm gonna go for two mil so I say okay and there we go look at this it's starting to look pretty good something like this would actually be difficult to print because you'd need to use well it wouldn't be difficult but you would need to use supports right um, if you wanted to keep it simple with printing you generally probably wouldn't do this pointed tip but I'm just showing you here it's just part of the design I'm showing you how you can make your models that a little bit better so there we go that's our comb so finally let's go and play with our parameters as we always like to do and I'm gonna make the tooth height let's increase that to maybe 30 Ah, oh, there we go, that's better. So we can also play around here with the tooth width as well. So because we've referenced all these parameters, it's really easy to make changes. So if I wanted the teeth to be one millimeter, hit enter, you can see that the teeth are now um, small, the gap between the teeth is smaller, but if we double up the number of teeth to 60, we've now got more teeth in that area. And this is what you call a very fine tooth comb. Um, probably would be very difficult to print this. Uh, I'm going to go for something like uh, 1.5 and we'll go for 45 teeth and hit OK. So this is now starting to look pretty good and you know it's just as good as anything you'd find in any kind of store. Now if you wanted to do something cool for somebody as a gift or something like that you could put you know text on here you could put somebody's name there you could put a logo there and this is the beauty of CAD is it's custom to you and you can do whatever you want. Finally, let's adjust the comb width to 200 to see if we keep our offsets correct. So there we go, we did increase the width, but you can see what I was talking about before with that number of teeth. It'd be really cool if we could use the width to determine how many teeth we wanted. So let's go ahead and change this back. I like it at 140 with 60 teeth at 1.5 millimeter tooth width. Finally, let's add a little bit of color in here just to spice things up a bit. So let's go to modify appearance. We're going to go and select plastic, drag ABS white up here into our color palette, double click it and basically pick whatever color you want. Hit close. And there we go. We have our comb. So that's it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to quickly reach out and ask for your support. If you appreciate these videos that I put out for free on YouTube, please consider becoming a website member to support me. My biggest goal is to do this full time and keep inspiring people through teaching and sharing my own projects. You can help make this a reality by becoming a website member and I'd really appreciate it. In return for your membership, you gain access to my Fusion 360 for Beginners course. You also get access to my 3D CAD files for all of my projects. And finally, you'll gain access to the members only Discord channel where you can hang out with the other members and ask me questions. All links to these web pages I'll put in the description down below. Any support would be massively appreciated. Thank you and back to the video.